YouTube silencing crypto creators? Ho, ho, ho. Welcome to the Christmas Eve 2019 crypto special. Hello, welcome back. My name is Seth Estrada. And if you're watching this YouTube video about cryptocurrency, then you're probably on my YouTube channel, Seth Estrada. However, that might not be the case for very long. Big thanks to mineyour.biz for sponsoring this video. So YouTube is silencing cryptocurrency content creators. It's all over the news. It's all over Twitter. Almost everyone has been affected. Almost every size channel has had some sort of fallout. Let's talk about that. But before we do, let's talk about the markets. Let's take a look at just the pure market numbers right there, market cap. We can see that Bitcoin, of course, is doing well and the general trend is up over seven days. However, the last hour, last 24 hours, there's been a little bit of a dip. There are some who believe this is because of a bit of minor capitulation, typical stuff with large scale mining operations, acquiring Bitcoin and then dumping quickly in order to fund their operations. This is just a part of doing business, the cost of doing business for large scale cryptocurrency miners and for mid scale as well, where keeping the lights on, literally keeping the electricity going requires that some of the assets be sold off. However, if miners can have a low time preference, then obviously the potential upside is way greater. So this is me issuing a call and a plea to cryptocurrency miners everywhere. If you can hold on to your bags for just a little bit longer, you will help the market just a little bit more. However, this is a cost of doing business for traders as well. And for anybody who's speculating in cryptocurrency markets, it seems this has not been anything new over the last five to six years as exchanges have gained in popularity. Now, the earliest days of Bitcoin and derivative, rather derivative coins, forked coins, there weren't as many exchanges to choose from. And there was not nearly as large a global hash rate for any one of these networks. So this was a problem waiting to happen, and it's just a cost of doing business within this market. It's about as fruitful to complain about minor capitulation as it is to complain that in commodity markets, people keep finding new sources of oil to drill and excavate. So again, I don't offer any kind of legal, financial, or other advice. We don't complain about the Exxon Mobiles of the world finding new sources of oil that, that when they can avoid creating major oil spills and polluting the environment, we don't complain about them increasing the supply. So I'm not sure why we complain about crypto miners increasing the supply as that's what's outlined in the white paper of Bitcoin and other coins. But Bitcoin's doing well. Ethereum apparently doing okay. We see a green line there, though it's primarily just the minute by minute, the blow by blow that we're seeing over seven days, not doing so great. Tether is miraculously recovering. It's not doing terribly and it's still on the top 10. But what I'd like to do is focus a little bit more on another score here, the developer score. I love seeing on CoinGecko the developer score for coins because it shows you the technological merit of a project. And I'm not going to use the trope that I'm in it for the technology. Clearly, there are several of us who are interested in cryptocurrency because there is the potential for speculative investment and for financial upside. That said, there are some small problems that cryptocurrency and blockchain technology are uniquely suited to help overcome. Anybody who says that you know blockchain solves this for everything, of course, they're making a joke. It can't possibly solve everything. But when it comes to censorship resistance, there is a case to be made for cryptocurrencies, but specifically for cryptocurrencies that prioritize privacy. Let's take a look at this stack ranking now and see where all of the different cryptocurrency projects line up when stacked by developer score. You'll see that Projects like, for example, Monero with over 2,000 active forks of the Monero project, they do quite well. Now, Bitcoin, of course, has over 20,000 forks, 24,000 forks, as you can see right there. Many of them are not active. And of course, many of them have been changed so much that they no longer resemble the Satoshi-like blockchain of an open public distributed ledger. And some would argue that having an open and public distributed ledger is problematic, not only for a cryptocurrency, but for blockchain in general, when you talk about censorship resistance. Sure, you can be anonymous, provided that you're an OPSEC, an operational security specialist, and you begin your journey into the cryptocurrency space with perfect anonymity. You can preserve it. 
However, if you don't understand how to begin your journey into cryptocurrency with perfect anonymity, then you probably need some kind of a coin project that prioritizes your privacy. So they'll help you to regain anonymity using those coins. So projects like Monero, they rank higher than they do just based on market cap alone. Same with Dash right now. As I understand it, Dash is actually not in the top 25. Uh, let's just double check though. I don't want to misspeak here. Nope. Still number 25 by market cap as well. That's kind of a happy accident. But several of these projects have were initially conceived as privacy oriented coins or at least a cash replacement. Dash went from its original branding into digital cash or Dash shortened so that it would evoke that kind of uh, idea. Let's start with maybe one of the worst examples, Bitcoin. Bitcoin, of course, was accused of having a very large pre-mine, nearly 80% of the available coin supply so that the founders uh, basically didn't win a lot of friends. However, the overall trend has been positive for Bitcoin primarily based on the crypto note spec of using ring, ring signatures for privacy. The volume is not terrible by way of mining. However, it's very difficult to be profitable when mining Bitcoin because it's fallen to ASIC dominance. But Bitcoin, a viable option as a privacy-oriented coin, notwithstanding the fact that there was a huge pre-mine. Komodo uses ZK Snarks and has a daily trading volume that's well over a million dollars. So if you can be profitable, Again, market sentiment as well is quite good towards Komodo based on what CoinGecko has listed here. But Komodo, privacy option there. Horizon, ZK Snarks enabled. You have privacy there and you have master nodes or service nodes and super nodes that you can employ to gain passive block rewards or at least not have to worry so much about high energy output block rewards that come your way and contribute to a node network that may be used for useful work down the line. You have Grin, which there's been some controversy surrounding lately. For the average person, I don't think it's reasonable to presume that the privacy is completely broken on Mimblewimble. However, market sentiment is low. I don't know. I think if I were a, a trading man, if I were a betting man, I would bet that there are some people trying to sop up all that liquidity based on the recent price dump and the recent sentiment over the last seven days, yeah, the last 24 hours, it was a quick spike. But over the last uh, little while since that article came out, I would guess that there are plenty of whales coming in, waiting to swoop in and take up all of the daily volume that you can possibly send their way. Beam, also privacy oriented. Sentiment is not so great towards Beam. However, privacy there is a priority. Zcoin, which I'm becoming an increasingly uh, bigger fan of over time based on not only the Merkle tree proofs that are used as the proof of work algorithm, but also the mint and burn originally zero coin protocol, but now the Sigma protocol used by Zcoin with a larger anonymity set than most crypto notes, though it is technically, it's a smaller anonymity set than most ZK snark oriented privacy coins. However, Zcoin is doing quite well and the team is actively developing features and more robust privacy with untrusted setup in order to get zcoin running that is something that zcash today cannot boast even though the anonymity set of zk snarks is greater huge fan of zcoin i'm looking closely at what they're doing loki network had them on the show uh, a while back huge fan of what they're doing as well with service nodes on the loki net and a rebrand of their messenger, their fork of the Signal app, Whisper Protocol-based messenger that is privacy-oriented and uses end-to-end -end encryption. Loki's doing great, and obviously market sentiment reflects that as well. I'm a huge fan, and I think you should look closer at Loki. Again, I mentioned them on the show privately about being a really good spec mine play early on, and I still believe they're a good coin to take note of. Moving on, there's Divi, very bold moves that the founding team has been making, and a huge push to stay visible and to increase usability for new users. User experience, and we've talked about this on the show before, user experience is a very important part of cryptocurrency. Now, we can get carried away because user experience is a bit of a slippery slope. When we make things too accessible, too easy, then we take away the opportunity for people to really be in charge of what's happening. Think of it as sort of manual transmission versus automatic. You're no longer connected to the machine, and it's not so much that you can't drive, you can't use it, 
as much as there are some opportunities lost for being in full control of the direction of what's going on under the hood. Some would argue that's a good thing. Some would argue that's a bad thing. I'm, I just argue that we need to be cautious moving forward when we take too much out of the hands, too much control out of the hands of the user. But Divi Project, proof of stake with some privacy. And of course, the King Daddy Bitcoin, there it is. Bit of a price dip over the last, last 24 hours. But again, I strongly suspect, and uh, thank you, uh, Big, uh, Big Crypto Dave, for pointing this out. I strongly suspect that it's because of the regular Bitcoin dumps coming out of a couple of key wallets that are likely owned by large-scale mining operations. So keep, keep eyes on that. Any technical analyst who's telling you, well, there's all this other sentiment, uh, there are some hard realities too within cryptocurrency, and mining is one of them. Proof of work is not free. It is not cheap, but it is the cost of censorship resistance and security. Monero, the king daddy of crypto notes today, based on number of fork projects. Loki, mentioned before, is a direct fork of Monero, with additional project mer projects merged into it. Clearly, sentiment is 50-50 on Monero. I don't know what that's all about because the Monero team continues to push commits and continues to work on the product and the core code base with uh, the fork to random X mining, which I guess, again, thank you to our sponsor, mindy.biz. We see there are mining rigs there that are fairly low cost that address specifically Loki and Monero on random X, but random X algorithm was pioneered by the Monero team. So huge thank you to the Monero team and any of the forks of Monero or any crypto notes that leverage the random X mining algorithm are beneficiaries of the work done by that team. So we owe them at least some applause and some public gratitude, some public praise. If not, also taking a look at the coin and evaluating it for, uh, for your purposes. Dash, the king daddy of masternode projects. Also, sentiment kind of 50-50. This is where I think in 2020, moving forward, we may notice that innovation is more important than, than air quotes brand loyalty. Bitcoin is not a brand. Dash seems to be a brand in some ways. Uh, it's been some time since we've seen the the larger proliferation of media coming out of the Dash uh, Dash organization, but they do have community governance that allows for those funds to be used for promoting their their project. But it does come across as a bit more of a brand than say Bitcoin. I don't know. We'll see. There may be forks and other projects that use similar technologies to what Dash does that outpace the popularity of Dash. However, that's unlikely to happen from a market cap and daily volume perspective. Uh, how much of the volume from some of these projects is completely organic and actually real versus how much of it is wash trading and, and exchanges pumping up their own volume? I don't know. I'm not an expert and uh, I don't give advice. I do know that several of the newer projects that have larger innovation are going to have a really big fight ahead of them in 2020 to increase the volume and usage of their coins, hopefully without faking volume on exchange. And then Zcash, Ooh. Zcash, Zcash, a uh, very problematic, very problematic coin and very problematic foundation in my mind. However, clearly market sentiment is high, but it is the king daddy of ZK snark based projects. Only mineable with uh, with ASICs, which I'm mostly against. But there you have it. It's another option if you're interested in starting your research on privacy-oriented coins. A couple of other noteworthy call-outs. I'm going to mention BitTube specifically, precisely because they have a platform that I think we're going to need to go over in depth for this Christmas Eve special. This is essential that we talk about alternatives to YouTube. And the BitTube token is essential, the BitTube rather cryptocurrency is essential to their platform, BitTubers.com. So taking a look at it, clearly market sentiment is very high and there's been quite a pump recently, uh, likely due to the news with increased volume across the board. Trade Ogre is apparently where there is some of the highest volume. Uh, QBTC shows greater volume, but I don't know. I would, I'd be willing to bet that some of the other platforms such as Crex24 and Trade Ogre are a little bit more accurate. Interesting, there's a strong buy there. That wasn't my intent. I'm not selling, but, um, but you know, you do your own research and you figure out what's best for you. BitTube also has privacy at its core, being a crypto note oriented or crypto note based coin. And then one more based on technological merit is TurtleCoin. It's broken into the top 1,000 and into the top 600 spot. Hopefully, it'll continue to march forward into the top 200. 
Love the team at TurtleCoin. Still very much appreciative of the time and effort that they put into making crypto notes easy to fork. Why does that matter? I'd like to show you this quick snippet from John McAfee talking about why that matters. Without a fee, any kind of currency, you cannot pay the rent, um, buy a car, send your kids to school, can't do anything. Um, and the individual or individuals that control that currency control you at any time. I mean, you can work and slave and save your money for years and you have produced in the stroke of a pen that could be cut in half by an inflationary policy or, or what have you. In order to use that currency, you must do it in a way, at least if you do it significantly, where it can be monitored, right? You want to send a wire transfer, we're going to know that. You want to do something more than $10,000, you better not do it in cash in America. Uh, on and on and on. Cryptocurrency, the blockchain and cryptocurrency together. The value is, is that we get to create or use what someone else has created, a currency that is controlled by someone that um, is ours. I mean, cryptocurrency in the blockchain, it's the first technology that uh, has arisen in the past 100 years that did not come from the bowels of a secret government program or a major corporation. It came from the people, ordinary people, really, normal people, a bunch of geeky developers built something, made it open source, and from that small beginning, we have built through progressively more complex and powerful blockchains, something that people without government have never built before. You realize this is not a government program, people. This is a people program. And no one is getting on board in the proper fucking way. I mean, I just described how it can free us, and everybody's jumping on board but not to free themselves uh, to make a quick buck. Jump into the exchanges. What's going to go up? What's going to go down? And I'll tell you now that financial freedom is not possible. A lot of money, that's possible. Uh, freedom from uh, having to worry about eating, at least for today, because I promise you, no matter how much you have, it can't be wiped out overnight by the vagaries of reality. No, that doesn't make you free. What makes you free is having control over your life without massive surveillance, influence from the outside, massive cage that you have to live inside in order to make peace with that system. So this is what that offers in a nutshell. I'm sorry I went on so long. There you have it. Straight from the man himself, John McAfee, talking about the impact of open source technology and cryptocurrency in general. I'm not going to show you ref links on this show. I am going to talk to you about the possibility of looking up a cryptocurrency repository on GitHub or wherever else you can fork it and creating your own. It'll teach you about how it works. Big shout out to Ivan on Tech as well, talking about the halving on one of his recent video podcasts on how you can check the halving on Bitcoin proper within the repository for yourself. He even shows you exactly where to go to do so. The more we learn how to audit this code, the more we take responsibility for our own dangerous freedom, our own ability to understand how cryptocurrencies work and to avoid, uh, like the project mentioned before, where Bitcoin had an 80% pre-mine, avoid supporting projects that are being greedy or being abusive in some way because we'll be able to understand how to audit the code for ourselves or go to sources that we trust to audit the code and understand that they really know what they're talking about. Let's take a look really briefly at some of the cryptocurrency content creators across the Twitterverse that have been dealt a bad hand by YouTube. Chris Dunn, talked about how YouTube just removed most of my crypto videos citing harmful or dangerous content and sale of regulated goods. It's been 10 years of making videos, 200,000 plus subs and 7 million plus views. What the freak are you guys doing, Team YouTube? Good question. Heidi, the blockchain chick, crypto tips as she's known across her video channels, says my channel has been affected by this new wave of censorship as well. The joys of working with centralized entities with suffocating agendas. <laughs> Partial smile. If my channel crypto tips gets taken down, you can find me here. Good for her for having a backup plan. Also, I believe Heidi was on Bit2 
BitTube, the earlier version before it changed to BitTubers.com. Heidi, this is my personal invitation to you to return to BitTubers because I think that platform will also complement what you're doing on Libri. Ivan on Tech is retweeting the pain points of other content creators, and there are many of them, as we'll see. Whale Tamer says it's happening to the smaller channels. Same with Pygaz, happening to the smaller channels. Sunny Decree tagged most of the cryptocurrency, the largest cryptocurrency channels on YouTube and posted this screenshot of what he has given to the YouTube team in protest of the actions taken against them. Altcoin Buzz says our YouTube channel has a strike for harmful and dangerous content. So no videos next few days. That martini guy says, now it happened to me. YouTube creators, YouTube, stop allowing people to mass flag videos. Box Mining, right after decrying the uh, the poor treatment of other YouTubers, says, apparently I got a content strike over a video about crypto censorship in South Korea. Appealing the ban now. This whole incident really shows YouTube has no idea what they are doing and is just censoring free speech and news coverage. And then Ian Bellina saying YouTube removing and censoring crypto videos is a reminder always to have a distribution channel you fully control, like a website or email that you can use to communicate with your audience. Ian, I couldn't agree more strongly. Email is not dead and email communication is not dead. Chatbots are no replacement for email communication when you have an audience that actually cares to hear from you. Same with having your own dedicated website that you publish and that you control and that you have hosted ideally on some kind of VPS service that is less susceptible to take down requests than uh, you might find on the more common sites. All right, so let's jump back into this. What are my thoughts on the easy censorability of YouTube channels. Well, I have not been a fan for some time and I've made it very clear that BitTube is my preferred platform. Why? Why am I such a fan of BitTube? Well, in part because having a crypto note backed token, or rather having a crypto note issued token for the block reward and for the viewer rewards and for the creator rewards, BitTube allows for full fungibility and privacy within creator reward systems. Brave, not my favorite. You may even notice up in the corner of the browser behind me that I am now switching back to Dissenter Browser, which is a fork of the Brave Browser. They recently updated it, which signaled to me that the Dissenter team at Gab is taking the development work seriously of forking and then modifying the, uh, the code from Brave. Now, we all owe a huge debt of gratitude to the Brave team for integrating Tor really well into the Chromium code base. But Dissenter has done a really good job of removing the basic attention token, which is an open public distributed ledger. So content creators, if they're not particularly careful about how they receive rewards through Uphold and from the basic attention token network, they can be doxxed. They can have their payments completely public for anybody to see exactly how much they've earned through viewer contributions or just through airtime rewards or through split block rewards with content creators. With BitTube, you'd have to opt into that. You'd have to allow for your address to be public. But the note itself, even if it is sent to you, you can then move it along the network. And in one transaction, your privacy and anonymity is preserved. So let's talk about how to get started with BitTube right now. Big thank you to the BitTube community for tweeting out these instructions. But on KB BitTube app, you can see this link down in the description of this video. As you can see, linking your YouTube account to BitTubers is a simple three-step process. We're going to go through it live on this video. You may notice that, <laughs> that on this workstation, I am still using Windows. So I'm gonna to go to my settings. Looks like I may have to go full screen to be able to link account. And now I will simply sign in with Google. Accept the permissions there. Click on allow. And I am now linked. Again, big thank you to mindyear.biz for sponsoring this video. All right, so tell me down in the comments, what are your concerns going into Christmas 2019 and of course, New Year's 2020 in the crypto space? Is holding Bitcoin a liability? Is talking about Bitcoin dangerous? Do you think it's inherently a dangerous and harmful activity? 
And do you think that people who are talking about specifically auditing code and evaluating projects on your own terms, do you believe they're promoting the sale of regulated goods? Tell me down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video to the end. Thank you so much for pressing the subscribe button and clicking on the bell icon so you're notified when new videos like this come out. If I don't see you on YouTube in the near future, well, I think you know why. So you can follow me on the links down in the description on other platforms. You're the reason I make this media. I love your face and I will see you in the next one.